Slavik Pustovoitov. He's a 25-year-old Ukrainian dancer, a choreographer, an Instagram and a TikTok celebrity, and an influencer. Known as Itslavik, he does these amazing flash mob type dances in all sorts of exotic and unexpected places, usually to the music of people like Michael Jackson. His BGs staying alive is typical. And when they toss their jackets, I couldn't help but remember Zorba the Greek, that 1964 classic when Alan Bates asks Anthony Quinn to teach him to dance on the beach. I'm sure you agree that dancing has come a long way in the last 60 years. Now, you may not be familiar with the story of Zorba the Greek, either through Nikos Kazantzakis' famous book or through the movie. Well, Zorba was not a fictional character. He was a real person, Alexis Zorba, who had such a larger-than-life personality and energy that when he died, Kazantzakis found his death very difficult to accept, incredulous that such energy and verve and color were mortal. On learning of Zorba's death, this was Kazantzakis' reaction. He says, I closed my eyes and felt tears rolling slowly, warmly down my cheeks. He is dead. 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 Zorba is gone. Gone forever. The laughter is dead. The song cut off. The santir broken. The dance on the seaside pebbles has halted. The insatiable mouth that questioned with such incurable thirst is now filled with clay. Such souls should not die. Will earth, water, fire, and chance ever be able to fashion a Zorba again? It was as though I believed him to be immortal. But sometimes, my friends, it's hard to believe that a certain person can die because of the life and energy that he or she incarnated. We simply cannot imagine that life pulse dead, stilled, forever gone from this planet. Certain people seem exempt from death because we cannot imagine such energy and color and generosity and goodness dying. How can such a wonderful energy just die? I've felt many times that sort of feeling in my life. Most recently, last month, when an old golfing buddy finally succumbed to cancer. Although not a Greek, Franco Pellegrini was Italian, which I guess is the next best. But he was a specially spirited, colorful, witty, and generous person. Kazantzakis came to mind, and so did his struggle to accept Zorba's death along with the way that he tried to deal with that death. He decided that he would try to resurrect Zorba, to bring him back to life, by taking his story to the world in such a way so as to transform his life into a myth, into a dance, almost into a religion. Cousin Sakis believed that this is what Mary Magdalene did in the wake of Jesus' death, when she left his tomb and went back into the world. She resurrected Jesus by telling his story, creating a myth, a dance, almost a religion. And so in the wake of Zorba's death, Kazan Sakis said to himself, let us give him our blood so that he can be brought back to life. Let us do what we can to make this extraordinary eater, drinker, 
workhorse, womanizer, and vagabond live a little longer. This dancer and warrior, the broadest soul, the surest body, the freest cry I ever knew in my life. <laughs> well, bless his effort. It made for a great story, a gripping myth, a good movie, but it never made for a religion or an eternal dance because that is not what Mary Magdala did with Jesus. Nonetheless, there still is something to be learned here about how to deal with a death that seemingly takes some oxygen out of the planet. We must not let that wonderful energy disappear. We must try to keep it alive. However, as Christians, we do this in a different way. We read the Mary Magdala story quite differently. Mary went to Jesus' tomb, she found it empty, and went away crying. But, but, before she got to tell anyone any story, she met a resurrected Jesus who shared with her how his energy, color, love, person would now be found, namely in a radically new modality inside his spirit. And that contains the secret of how we are to give life to our loved ones after they have died. How do we keep our loved ones and the wonderful energy that they brought to the planet alive after they have died? Well, firstly, by recognizing that their energy doesn't die with their bodies. It doesn't depart this planet. Their energy remains alive, still with us, but now inside us, through the spirit that they leave behind, just as Jesus left his spirit behind. Further still, their energy infuses us. Whenever we enter into those places where their spirits thrived and breathed out generative oxygen. Although very much still alive, for it's Slavic, it's his moves and his ripped six pack. For Zorba, it was his fearlessness and his zest for life. For Franco, it was his great love of his family and Parkview Golf Club. In that energy, they breathed out something of God. Whenever we go to those places where their spirits breathed out God's life, we breathe in again their oxygen, their dance, their life. Like you, I'm sure, I've sometimes been stunned and saddened and incredulous at the death of a certain person. How could that special energy just die? Sometimes that special energy was manifest in physical beauty, perhaps, in human grace, in fearlessness, in zest, in color, in moral steadiness, in compassion, graciousness, warmth, wit, or humor. It can be hard to accept that beauty and life-giving oxygen can seemingly just leave the planet. But my friends, in the end, nothing is lost. Sometime in God's time, at the right time, the stone will roll back. And like Mary Magdala walking away from the grave, we will know that we can breathe in that wonderful energy again. And God bless you.